Yes, Ronak, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. If, if water is not uh, properly available to the crop, then they will they may uh, dry up and die. So basically, you know, the crops will dry, and ultimately, it will lead to the crops will die basically right there would be no yield there would be no harvest obviously okay what else you you spoke about the crops what else what other things are associated with it ma'am then soil will also not get water correct. and water can happen correct even the soil will get dry and if it's dry you know we have used so much of manure we have used so much of fertilizer Remember all the tilling and all the, um, you know, plowing and weeding and so many things have been done. So what is the use of doing all these if we don't water it on time and properly? Because water is it, because water is the thing which will pull the manure and the roots will, you know, kind of absorb towards the plant, towards the stem. Yes, drought can occur. The soil will crack up right severely the and the, the local area will get affected right akshat you're right uh, the yield of the crop will get affected leave alone yield the crops won't even grow properly right so irrigation is an extremely extremely important part of crops crop management right and you know every crop every crop has got different water requirements Every crop has different water requirements. There are certain uh, crops which requires watering twice a day. There are certain crops which require watering once a day. Right? There are certain crops which requires strong sunlight. There are certain crops which require shade as an in indirect sunlight. Right? So, obviously irrigation would play a major role on the availability of water for that particular crop so one has to be very sensitive when to water how to water there are certain crops which grow very well when they are watered early in the morning certain crops require water at broad daylight because there's so much of uh, heat and sunlight that they require to be hydrated and there are certain plants which require to be watered at the end of the day you know maybe during the dusk or something right so yes ronak rice rice kind of you know it's kind of immersed in water for a couple of weeks at this stage when it's a sapling so the water requirement is yes basically you know if you don't water the aquifer what is an aquifer you have the answer and really appreciate you know that for participating but i want the others also Ma'am, aquifer is like an underground layer of water mm -hmm. and what it is it also known as It is basically the water table, right? It is basically the water table, also known as the water table, right? So what actually charges the aquifer? More of water charges the aquifer, Rain, rainfall, water, you know, all these things charge the aquifer, right? So if that particular area, that particular land is not watered properly, then even the aquifer will dry up. Even the aquifer will not get charged up. Understood. So that will lead to a, uh, you know, um, a kind of a drought in the nearby areas, as in the entire village could suffer because of that. Correct? Because uh, all these water ultimately would percolate down and seep through and percolate and go to the aquifer only. And from these aquifer only, you know, for example, this is the aquifer out here. And this is the village bore well or maybe the village well out here. Right? So the villagers will draw water from here only. So if the aquifer is not fully charged, even the village will face major water crisis because everything is ultimately linked. The aquifer, the water table is ultimately linked. Right? Okay. So right time uh, for the right crop watering is very important. These are the importance of irrigation. Uh, Alex, can you please read out the first two points? Okay, ma'am. Importance of irrigation. Point number one. Plants absorb minerals and nutrients from the soil via their roots. These minerals are dissolved in water. 
present in the soil and the water transports these nutrients. Number two, it provides the moisture that is crucial during the germination phase of the plant's life cycle. Hmm. So can you please explain the first point, Alex? Ma'am, they, ma they, uh, they absorb the minerals and nutrients from their roots. Mm -hmm. So how do they absorb it? Why the plant? roots? Why the roots? So how does that happen? How does that happen? Yeah. Okay, Ronak. Yeah. And the water we provide to the soil or crop, it percolates down through the soil and the plants can absorb it via their root. Yeah, so that's what my question is. How do the roots absorb it? That's my question. If this is the root, right? This is the root. This is the plant. So how does the root absorb it? See, what happens is that, for example, yes, Naisha, you want to share? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, certain tissues present in the roots take in the water and uh, provide it to the rest of the plant. Yes, good. You're quite close. So how does I'm that like, how, how is the form? Uh, in the roots, uh, not really. In the roots, no. I think phloem is in stem. Phloem, to absolutely no, because phloem only carries food from the, the leaf food, yeah. to the yeah food from the leaf to the different parts of the plant. Xylem carries water, right? So basically, what happens is that just consider that you know um, the red ones are the minerals and the nutrients that, that you had sprayed in the form of fertilizers and manure right and this is the blue ones are the water that you had used while irrigation right now what happens is that most of the uh, you know most of the fertilizers in the manure right they are soluble in water right none of them will, will not be insoluble all of them will be soluble in water so after the minerals combine with water right they would form a compound then what happens is that Remember, we have the root hairs. The plants have root hairs, right? So at that level, what happens is that osmosis happens. What is osmosis? Kavya, tell me what is osmosis? Monica, will you be able to share what is osmosis? It's very simple. All of you must have studied this. Varnika? Yes, what is osmosis? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. Veda, what about you? Would you want to give it a try? I check. Yes, please. Uh, when uh, something goes uh, to a substance with a higher concentration from something from a lower concentration, from a substance of a lower Correct, correct. So first I'll have to explain what is osmosis to you. So for example, this is a semi-permeable membrane. All of you understand what is a semi-permeable membrane? Yes, ma'am. This will only allow the entry, or, yes, el entry or exit of certain particles, right? So for example, there is a lot of nutrients, water out here, right? So what will happen is that here, through this semi-permeable membrane, certain things will come here, will slowly, 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 slowly shift to this place also, right? Over a period of time, what will happen is that it will keep on shifting from this place to this place till the time the concentration in this as well as in this is the same. This is known as osmosis, right? A classic example for osmosis is kishmish, resin. All of you know what is the reason? Yes, ma'am. That you use in deserts, kishmish, dried grapes. It's normally very dried and wrinkled, right? You just take a bowl of water, right? Uh, take a little bowl of water and then put the dried reason there. After half an hour, what you will see is that the reason is all swollen up. Why and how? 
osmosis because the resin was dry and there was lot of water outside so the water entered the resin through the skin that is a semi permeable membrane and bloated up the resin now it kept on happening till the time the water concentration in the bowl and inside the resin was the same only then the osmosis stopped similar thing happens here the you know all the nutrients and the water that you have put in the soil so these root hairs through the process of osmosis takes in the you know the nutrients and the water and through a capillary force sends it till the stem now the stem will again send it to the leaves and other parts of the plant mainly to the leaves for photosynthesis is this clear to all yes ma'am what about others i want a yes from all of you otherwise yes, how do you understand yes ma'am okay okay good so can we go to the next point so we are done with this first point now coming to the second point okay veda can you explain the second point to me to all of us rather amma ronak let veda try if she if she is unsuccessful then you can yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah explain the second point ma'am the um, the soil provides the water for the plant during the germination process correct so what is that process basically germination yeah what is germination phase what happens mm -hmm. in germination while the uh, seed is growing mm hmm growing yeah. into a, a plant or sapling or tree correct so basically you know it's a process by which a seed you know develops its radical and plumule and then slowly you know a shoot system and a root system so this process is called germination right sprouting right sprouting is a classic case of germination all of you must be having sprouts at home no sprouts yes, of, yeah sprouts of chana dal moong dal so these sprouts have actually undergone the process of germination so what has your mom done she took dry seeds right oh very good ronak you had sprouts today only so she actually took those legumes or the seeds and then dipped in water you know she took a bowl and she, they dipped it in water lot of seeds out of those seeds and water actually kept those cotyledons hydrated you know then the first day you will find a little bit of a white something coming out of it then you know maybe the second day you will find it a little longer and then a little radical coming out of it and the third day you know this you might find it a little greenish things stemming out and then proper radical popping out so yes, there go, yeah so there would be a time when you know uh, you know the cotyledons actually from where did these get the nutrition it got the nutrition from the cotyledons this is cotyledon number 1 this is cotyledon number 2 so the cotyledons have a lot of reserved nutrients in them it just lacks water that's the reason why when put in water it starts sprouting starts germinating and then yes, we'll start yes ronak mam then why can't uh, other seeds reproduce like this means uh, go through the germination phase so tell me a seed which doesn't reproduce like this germinate like this mam is like crops we add manure and fertilizers to to them so if we don't add then also they can grow like this in them so from uh, from where do you think the uh, the rice when they put those rice small 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 things no from where did they get that every crop every small plant will come from a seed only yes ma every seed when uh, you know soaked properly or undergoing undergone the process properly they will germinate otherwise from where will the new plant come from there are a few plants which undergoes vegetative reproduction you cut the stem and plant 
but most 90% 99% of the plants you know are they are derived from the seeds okay ma'am you name tomato you name um, methi coriander right most yes. lemon orange all of them you know they come from the seeds they come they derive you know they are, the moment they are like this then they, you know the cotyledons cannot support them anymore because now the plant is growing that is when they are planted in the soil right okay. so when you see the farmers spraying something on the field what is it they are sowing spraying the seeds and then they'll water the so water the soil field and they'll make make it moist this moist that is when after a few days germination will happen small small plants will come out of those seeds irrigation also makes the soil more fertile because when we add water of the seed the soil becomes more fertile so how does it make it more fertile uh it makes it more filled with nutrients like water gives its minerals and nutrients to the soil okay there is that is one plus that's one thing yeah from water also it gets its some nutrients what else see there are several angles to this one very good point naisha that you have shared is that water along with that with it brings in a if not many but a few minerals along with it this also makes the soil fertile the second point is you know maybe the water is coming through a channel like this right right it's flowing through a channel you know a bund or something like this so every time the water is flowing from like this and this is the land for example right so it's also it is also carrying along with it you know the silt certain minerals and certain many other things along with the soil that's flowing you know the water that's flowing on the soil and then it's you know kind of dropping it in the land uh, uh, agricultural land here so this is also one option right and the most important thing is that all the manure and the fertilizers that you have used many would remain in a powdery dry form so every time you are watering them you are moistening those you know fertilizers and manures and then it's decomposing getting decomposed and then it's being utilized so that is how you're making it more fertile because for example you have sprayed 100 kg of fertilizer right so the entire 100 kg of fertilizer is not being used up in one day this will take at least you know maybe 3 uh, weeks to be utilized because these are all slow release fertilizers you must have observed even in your home garden when you put fertilizer the next day you will not see flowers and healthy tree plants this will take at least one week and over a period of 3 weeks or 4 week you will see its effect again after one month again you will have to reapply fertilizer right and many a times what happens is that you know the water as naisha said the water that's being used also brings along with it lot of nutrients there could be several source right okay mm, veda can you please yeah. read out yeah sorry ronak explain the food okay yeah go ahead and it also increases the yield from the farm and because uh, when we add water as in the third point it uh, add nutrients to the soil so uh, the nutrients will, uh, will will be absorbed by the crops and they will go, go and the yield will be uh, means nice so yes the yield will be good 